Cuba and the drug trial. On June 11, 1984, I received an invitation from Fidel Castro to visit Cuba. Such visits happened periodically, and when they did, I invariably made a courtesy phone call to the CIA station chief, advising him of my trip, offering my services if the United States had any messages to pass along. By this time, all sides realized that I was a faithful broker in communicating between the United States and Cuba. So I contacted Don Winters, the CIA station chief in Panama at the time, telling him that I was planning a quick trip to Cuba and asking if he had any messages for Fidel. We both treated the matter as strictly routine. The timing of my trip was interesting enough for the director of the CIA himself, William Casey, to travel to Panama to brief me on the U.S. position on Cuba, asking that I push Fidel on certain issues. At a meeting at Governor's Beach outside Panama City, Casey outlined U.S. interests. Prime among them was the problem caused by the refugees of the Maria Boatlift, the thousands of Cubans who had been allowed to flee that Cuban port for the United States several years earlier on rafts and boats. Would Cuba negotiate the return of some of the Marialetos, as the boat people were known? The United States wanted to return those among them who were criminals and social misfits and who were provoking serious problems in U.S. prisons. The U.S. goal was to convince Fidel to take some of them back. This type of negotiation went on before and after, and I was always available to the United States when it came to meeting with or passing messages to Castro. This portion of the story was available at the drug trial. Winters was a witness at the Miami Federal Court, although his testimony was cut short. The government didn't want to let the jury hear about my friendship with so high a government agent, let alone with the director of the CIA. So they blocked most of Don's testimony and substituted several paragraphs of summary. I doubt if the jury, facing a year of proceedings in a mountain of papers, paid much attention. My friendship with the CIA remained concealed from the jury and the full extent of my emissary role to Cuba was not revealed. Documents held by the U.S. government, but suppressed and kept from the jury under the CIPA provisions, include a description of Casey's trip to Panama to meet with me about Castro. The United States has not admitted to this day that they asked me to arrange a visit to Cuba for a secret emissary to discuss these matters further. Fidel accepted. Sometime later, I spoke with U.S. Ambassador Vernon Walters, who told me he made the trip. At the drug trial, the entire Cuban relationship was woven into a pack of half-truths, or full-blown lies. Jose Blandin, the former Panamanian consul in New York who became a prime mover in the fabricated prosecution, twisted the facts around to help the U.S. government. The U.S. version, thanks to Blandin, was that Castro was to help mediate a situation that involved the discovery of a cocaine processing laboratory in the Darien jungle, not far from the Panama-Colombia border. My trip to Cuba, said Blandin, was a hurried one, since I supposedly feared that there would be retribution from the Medellin cartel. Blandin and the American investigators said that I had been paid $4 million to allow the establishment of the drug laboratory and that its destruction meant that the Medellin cartel had been double-crossed. Our forces didn't know the drug lab was there. When it was discovered, we contacted Colombia and dealt with it on an official level, including the turnover of those captured in the raid to the Colombian government. My trip to Cuba had nothing to do with it either, and I did not discuss the subject with Fidel. The Darien lab was uncovered on June 24th, 13 days after my Cuba trip was set up. The proof is in the CIA documents and in the word of Don Winters, who was not allowed to provide ample testimony. The real version of this trip alone destroys the U.S. indictment against me and shows that at a key moment, I was not involved in drugs in any way, but was taking political action on behalf of the CIA in the United States. The attempt to link Panama and Cuba to the cocaine trade was nothing new, but it was not based on reality, nor was the argument developed to support the thesis very logical. The argument was that I was conspiring with Fidel on drug matters, and that both of us had full knowledge and control of drug trafficking in our countries for years. The evidence came from the testimony of convicts who actually admitted dealing drugs. These men were offered leniency and tickets out of jail in return for the favor of implicating me or Castro in their affairs. The U.S. government put out the word to hundreds of men in its custody throughout the prison system. Your sentence could be commuted if you testify. The truth doesn't matter. Just come in and testify. 
In the case of Blandin, the situation was particularly foolish. Part of the evidence he used against me was a photograph in which he, Fidel, and I are seen attending a reception in Havana. Shocking, a photograph of Castro and me standing together. I must be guilty of drug dealing. Blandin was not a drug dealer, but he was a man who turned against me for spite after being dismissed from his post as Panamanian consul in New York. His web of lies was so twisted that, although his information is central to the trial, he was considered so unreliable that the prosecution never dared call him as a witness. The federal prosecutors in Miami thought their method of operation against me was so successful that they tried the same thing against Cuba, hoping to integrate themselves with the anti-Castro exile community in Miami. So why not use Carlos Leder? the pathological liar who admitted he never met me or Raul Castro and who is in jail for life and is called by some prosecutors dangerous, unreliable. Why not use him as the heart of your case against me and against Raul Castro? These men are your enemies. These men consort with communists. Political pressure halted the proceedings against Castro. When the government heard that my lawyer, Frank Rubino, was going to take the case against Raul, the same prosecutors who devised the case against me actually came in three times to ask my lawyers to see if I would testify against Raul and Fidel. Of course, if they had wanted to go to the extent of asking me to testify, it meant they really had no evidence at all. This business of plea bargaining, bartering with somebody in return for a deal. But if they had had even the slightest evidence, they wouldn't have come to me. In any case, I said no. I was prosecuted for political reasons, and my moral and ideological convictions are above the methods employed by such men in the guise of U.S. justice. These men, who thought they could trade in lies and dishonor, made a mistake when it came to me. And without me, their crusade against Raul and Fidel Castro floundered and went nowhere. 